Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you. You will see the sky opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, check check so tonight I wanted to uh, I wanted to share with you a bit about Saint Brother Andre the great Canadian saint the wonder worker of Montreal now it's true that today is not the feast of Saint Brother Andre as a matter of fact tomorrow is so this is kind of the vigil of his feast today we're celebrating um, Saint Newman an American saint. Unfortunately, I don't know much about Saint Newman. I was learning a little bit about him tonight at the supper table. Maybe by next year I'll know enough about Saint Newman to speak about him. But it is a healing mass tonight, a mass where we're praying for healing. And Brother Andre had a remarkable gift uh, of healing. So I just want to share with you a bit about his life. Um, he's a recent saint. He died in 1937. And he was just canonized about a year and a half ago. And uh, when St. Brother Andre died, it was the biggest funeral ever and since in Canada. About a million people came out to his funeral on a cold January day. Lots of snow, freezing cold. And um, uh, again, un unparalleled really in the Church of Canada. As a young man, he, he worked at different factory jobs, trying to find his way in life. And then he... He really felt he was called to the religious life. And so he, he applied to join the Congregation of the Holy Cross in Montreal. They had a college they ran there. And the community was hesitant to accept him. He, he didn't have very good health. And they thought that as a brother, he, he wouldn't be able to do much. You know, wouldn't be able to do much work. And they were actually going to let him go, but finally the the superior, one of the leaders said, listen, if he can't work, at least he'll be able to pray. And the truth is, is that he lived again to the age of 91 and probably did more work than all the other brothers put together. As a matter of fact, towards the end of his life, someone asked him, they said, what's the secret to a long life? And he said, work as much as you can and eat as little as possible, you know. <laughs> so that was, that was his wisdom. But, um, his job, most of his life as a brother, a very simple job, he, he was the one who would answer the door, what they call the porter, not the most complicated job. He was not an intellectual, a very simple man, a very short man. He was even shorter than I am. Can you believe that? They say not even five feet, you know. And, um, but he always joked. He said, when I joined this community, they showed me the door, and I've been there ever since, you know. But again, he had a tremendous gift of healing. What happened is, is because he was the one who answered the door, he got to meet a lot of people. People were constantly coming, and a lot of them had troubles. Some of them were poor, you know, broken and all of that. And he had great compassion for them. It wasn't enough just to send them away, but he had compassion for them, and he'd always pray for them. And what began to happen is people began to be healed. And word got out that the, the brother who answers the door at the college is healing people. And within a short time, the college was besieged with sick people wanting to see the brother. Want, they wanted to see Brother Andre. And uh, eventually what happened is, is the college was uh, in front of a, of a big hill called Mount Royal. At the time, it was just a forest. And Brother Andre always felt that there was supposed to be a chapel on that hill in honor of St. Joseph. Brother Andre had a tremendous love for St. Joseph, a devotion to St. Joseph. They say even as a child, his friends would call him St. Joseph's friend 
always love St. Joseph. And he'd always tell people, you know, ask St. Joseph to intercede for you. He can help you with his prayers in heaven still. And again, there were a lot of healings. And so they built a little chapel, and within months it was too small for the crowd. So they built a bigger chapel and a church, and today we have St. Joseph's Oratory, one of the biggest churches in the world and the biggest shrine to St. Joseph in the whole world. But again, as his healing gift was remarkable, they say the first known miracle, recorded miracle work by Brother Andre was when he was a young brother, he was helping out one day in the, in the infirmary. And there was a young boy who was, who was bedridden. He'd been sick in bed for weeks, very ill. And Brother Andre saw him in bed, and he said to the boy, he said, why are you being so lazy? And the boy said, I'm not being lazy, I'm sick. And Brother Andre said, you're not sick, go play with your friends. And the moment Brother Andre said, you're not sick, he felt well. He felt in perfect health. He got up and went and played with his friends. The nurses saw him playing with his friends. They said, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're not supposed to be playing with your friends. He said, he said the brother told me to go play with my friends. I'm playing with my friends. So Brother Andre wasn't allowed in the infirmary anymore. But they, they, they monitored the boy, and he was fine, completely healed. Another beautiful story uh, is... Uh, the doctor who worked in the infirmary in, 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 in the city, uh, he was a big critic of Brother Andre. Openly spoke out against Brother Andre. He, he thought Brother Andre was a fake. He thought Brother Andre was just playing on people's scruples. And the things he was doing weren't good. Brother Andre, he liked to pray over people with oil, kind of like we do here. But he, he would put the oil in front of a statue of St. Joseph and, and have a little candle or a little lantern burning in it. And he would always, you know, pray with them with the oil. And the doctor thought that was silly. And then one day the doctor's wife got sick. She developed a nasal hemorrhage. She was bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And the doctor couldn't do anything. He called in experts. He called in his colleagues. No one could stop the bleeding. And eventually she was getting close to death. And she said to her husband, the doctor, she said, get me Brother Andre. And the doctor said, I can't do that. Like, I've spoken out against this guy openly. And she said, get me Brother Andre. So he went and he asked Brother Andre if he would see his wife. And Brother Andre said, yes, I will. And as they were walking towards the house, Brother Andre turned to the doctor and he said, your wife isn't going to die. And the moment Brother Andre walked into the room, the bleeding stopped and never came back. She was healed. And the doctor changed his tune towards Brother Andre. There's humorous stories as well. Brother Andre would see, see hundreds of people a day. They would line up and wait for hours. And the, the system he had, he was in a room, he had a bell. He'd ring the bell, that means the next person comes in. And they, you know, the person inside goes out. So there was a lady, she, she could barely walk. She had to have two friends help her on either side so that she could walk into the room to see Brother Andre when he rang the bell, when it was her turn. So she walked in and Brother Andre looked at her and you know, just said a little word, you know, and may the Lord bless you and heal you or whatever. And then he rang the bell. And she was, she was insulted. And she began to, to yell at him. She said, listen, I've been waiting for hours and you don't even give me more than 10 seconds of your time. And in her anger, she stormed out of the room. And her friends were shocked. They said, you're walking. And she realized she was healed. She began to cry. Her friends began to cry. And the next person came in. <laughs> and there was also, when, when they were working on the cause for his beatification, they had tons and tons of testimonies of healings, including healings from, from, from well-known people. The premier of Quebec wrote in with a healing, what would be kind of like the... Uh, governor of, your, of a state, premier of, of the province of Quebec. This is what he wrote. 36 years ago, in 1916, I dislocated my right knee during a sporting event. My leg was set in plaster, but that did nothing to improve my condition. The dislocation was so severe that the slightest movement caused me pain, even in my sleep. I went to see Brother Andre, who was so confident that I would be cured, that he told me to go home directly instead of stopping off at the hospital where I was to be admitted 
the very next day. I have never suffered from my knee since. So again, oftentimes, Brother Andre would just tell someone, someone would come and be sick, and Brother Andre would say, you're not sick. Boom, the guy would be, be well again. Another beautiful story is uh, one day, uh, Brother Andre, he requested a priest to help at the chapel of St. Joseph to hear confessions and celebrate Mass. So the congregation sent him a young priest who was 36 years old, which happens to be how old I am. Isn't that cool? But anyways, um, and the priest, he went up to Brother Andre when he was sent, and he said, listen, you need to know they've sent you a blind priest. My eyesight has been deteriorating, and now I can't even read my breviary anymore. And Brother Andre said to the priest, he said, tomorrow you'll be able to read your breviary. The next day his eyesight was fine, and the eye doctors examined his eyes, and they said to the priest, they said, you, you can't see. You should not be able to read. We're looking at your eyes. Your eyes are not well. He was, he was an ongoing living miracle. He could see fine. And so again, the, the miracles were just countless uh, of, of Brother Andre. Again, Brother Andre, he had a great devotion to St. Joseph. He was like best friends with St. Joseph. And he would always encourage people, you know, ask St. Joseph to pray for you. And, and again, some of his stories are amusing. Again, Brother Andre... A very simple man. He was not a theologian. Nothing complicated. For example, there was an apostolic um, vicar from northern Ontario who came to see Brother Andre to pray at the shrine. And, um, and he said to Brother Andre, he said, one of the reasons I'm here is we built a huge school. We named it St. Joseph School in honor of St. Joseph. But we have serious debt problems. There's no money coming in. We're in big trouble, and I'm here to ask St. Joseph to help. And Brother Andre said, what? It's St. Joseph's school? And the, the vicar said, yeah. And he said, well, this is what you need to do. Make a big sign, and on the sign write, St. Joseph, pay your bills. <laughs> and, and put that sign in front of a, the statue of St. Joseph. It's his responsibility to provide for his school. And the, the vicar said, he said, shouldn't I be a little more ceremonious in my choice of words? And so he went home and he, he actually, all he wrote on the sign was, good St. Joseph, please pay the amount owed on our boarding school, you know, <laughs> on your boarding school rather. And, and quickly the favor was granted and the school was paid off. As I mentioned, St. Saint, uh, Saint Andre was instrumental in the building of, of, of the oratory, this, this massive Basilica in honor of St. Joseph. But what happened is, is as they were building it, they hit the, the depression in the 20s. And the money just ran dry, stopped coming in before they were able to put the big dome on the church. And in Canada, if you don't have a roof on your building, all of your construction deteriorates very quickly. And so they had an emergency meeting. At this point, uh, Brother Andre was very elderly. And they asked him at the end of the meeting, after all their discussions, they said, well, what do you think we should do? You're the one who started this whole thing. And Brother Andre, he said, he says, this was never my work. This is God's work. And this is what you need to do. The church is in honor of uh, St. Joseph. Get a statue of St. Joseph. Put it in the middle of the church under the open sky. If St. Joseph wants a roof over his head, he'll see to it that one is provided. <laughs> and again, almost immediately, the funds began to come in, and they were able to build the, the, the dome that covered the church. So again, he, he died in, in 1937 at age 90, 91, and Pope Benedict canonized him on October 17, 2010. But one of the most beautiful things about Brother Andre is he had this knowledge, and he would always share with people how close God is. People came to him, they were broken, they had all kinds of problems. He received every one of them with love, and he would always assure them. And there's some famous quotes that Brother Andre would, would always repeat to people. He, he would say, there is so little distance between heaven and earth that God always hears us. Nothing but a thin veil separates us from God. Another one of his sayings, perhaps his most well-known saying is, when you say to God, our Father, 
He has his ear right next to your lips. And then finally, Brother Andre would always tell people, put yourself in God's hands. He abandons no one. So what I want to do tonight after Mass, I, we're going to pray for healing. We're going to pray for healing. And we're going to ask St. Brother Andre to intercede for us and also St. Joseph to intercede for us. And I actually have from St. Joseph's Oratory in Montreal uh, some of the oil that would burn in front of the statue of St. Joseph that's blessed. And um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, anyone who would, would like, I'd like to, to just pray over each one of you with the, uh, the St. Joseph oil uh, and allow the Lord to continue His healing work, you know, through, through the uh, powerful intercession of Brother Andre St. Joseph and by the uh, mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And so St. Brother Andre, pray for us. Please stand let us now intercede before our Father in heaven. For the clergy that that having answered the call to follow Jesus they may help lead us to more fully follow him ourselves let us pray to the Lord for our for our civil leaders that they may have the strength and courage to consistently walk a path of justice and righteousness let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer for those suffering due to hate or bias, that their lives may be filled with love from people who truly follow Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our parish, that we may more readily tend to the needs of our sisters and brothers who are sick, hungry, or impoverished. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, having followed the call of Jesus,